had a very interesting job come in. This um, was a pair of Eastman boilers on a system. Uh, these had been pumped up wrong. They had a pump on the flow up here into the low loss header. Um, the neutral point is the low loss header, so the pump should be pumping away from the low loss header. And uh, the boilers need their own independent pumps to work correctly. So I've modified that and um, got that side of it done. Now it's feeding what's called a Chelmer unit, which is basically a, a heat store buffer. Um, I don't know what, what you'd call it. I've never seen one before and it took me a little while to work it out. But basically this unit is operated by two thermostats and a single timer. Um, the, uh, basically the heat is drawn in from the low loss header via this pump. And when it's in hot water mode, this valve opens, this one closes. They're wired up so this one can't be open at the same time. Uh, the water is fed into the cylinder and it basically comes to the bottom of the cylinder and back to the low loss header. So it's heating the whole cylinder from top to bottom when it's in hot water mode. In the top of here we have a, a heat transfer coil, so we've got domestic cold water coming in, ran around a coil, domestic hot water out. Um, now there's, there's a lot wrong with this system, there's no pre, uh, temperature tempering valves here and there's all sorts of stuff missing, but it's a very old installation and um, there, there will need to be some other work on that to make all of those things correct. Now it's connected to a solar system, so when the solar is operating it heats the very bottom of the cylinder um, so this can actually contribute heat to the heating system and it can contribute heat to the hot water system. Um, not very bright because it tends to be heated up all the time by the boilers so um, there doesn't seem to be any sort of overriding control system to make the solar work. And, um, you know, but you know, again it's uh, 30 years old the unit so you know, uh, things change. Anyway. So we've got solar supply in here. When we're in, uh, uh, now this, the central heating's operated independently. So these pumps are brought on by two programmable room stats um, and they fire up just those pumps. They don't do anything else. They don't send a signal to the boiler, um, but not directly anyway. Um, so there is a, there is, that's not strictly true. They kind of do send a signal to the boiler, but only um, if the boiler's checking to see if these are on in central heating mode, a little bit complicated. So these will draw off the bottom of the cylinder here. So this is a low temperature end of the cylinder. They'll draw off a low temperature flow to go to the underfloor heating systems and come back on the return. There is no blending valves on these and there's no room stats on these on this system. They're just directly connected. Um, and it's controlled by a thermostat here. Uh, one of the problems I found with this is that when it's heating up for hot water, uh, if this stat remains called upon by the hot water demand, can actually get some quite high temperatures going on down here. Um, and so you could get some pretty high temperatures going into the underfloor. So again, you know, it's, uh, it's existing on putting stuff in place and trying to make it better. Um, anyway, this was blowing fuses. We weren't sure where the fault was. It took me a while to track it down. And it was a very, very complicated uh, uh, wiring system for this. And it had been modified by the customer some years ago who was an electronics engineer or electrical engineer. Um, so he'd made his own adaptations to the system. And when the, the guy had modified it and installed these two boilers instead of the single Keston that used to be on it, he'd not utilized the two temperature supplies and, um, and he'd made some strange wiring modifications, let's say. So the uh, I got the customer out of trouble a few weeks ago and I went back last week to to sort it all out. So that was the replumbing of this unit. Uh, I've actually replaced one of the manifolds. I'm going to replace the other one in a couple of weeks' time. I've changed pumps, replaced pumps, etc., etc. But the main part of this was wiring. Now, the the thing that made this job really fascinating for me was working out the controls. And um, I know my drawings aren't always the best, but I do try. Um, now, the, uh, let me explain this end first. I'm not going to start at the beginning. This is actually a set of relays to mimic a cylinder demand relay from the Wiesmann boilers. And because of the way resistors work, we need two independent ones, one for each boiler. So this is a, a, a three pole relay. And basically we've got a, um, in the normally closed position, that's a satisfied signal. So the boiler's connected across these two points, 
boiler two, boiler one across those two. So when it's in the normally closed position, it thinks the hot water cylinder is 70 degrees. Uh, if power is applied to the relay, these latch across and changes the resistance seen by the boiler and the boiler will suddenly think that it's 20 degrees in the hot water cylinder and they will fire up to high temperature uh, running anywhere up around 80 odd degrees. Um, and so that's our boilers, ATC into our low loss header. It's eventual, it's not instant. That's fed across. Um, it's gonna be delivered into the top of the cylinder, come down here. And you're stacking water, this is a buffer. So you're not getting sort of a delta T20 through here. You're stacking whatever the temperature is at the bottom. That's why our return's gonna be the hot water is going to sit in the top and it's gradually going to work its way down until there's adequate temperature at this temperature sensor to shut this sensor down. Um, now the sensor down here is set at a far lower temperature than this one and very often this temperature will be exceeded in the process of this one being satisfied. So a little bit of a controls issue there but um, no, nothing too, too major. Um, so anyway, that's the function of this one section. The uh, zone valves here are the zone valves here. And the cylinder stat and buffer stat, as I've called it, buffer stat, cylinder stat, um, or domestic hot water stat, time control. The time control when it's on is telling us we want hot water in the top half. If it's off, it's actually on the off signal, uh, providing a signal into the central heating side and the central heating side uh, will only call on the boilers if it's below this temperature in this side um, and if there's a demand from the room stats so um okay so if we go through to the schematic we've got the timer control uh, we've got a live supply down to our, our first floor and ground floor timer stats so these are programmable room stats I'll go through this part first actually. These simply latch across these relays. So they will, if they're on, they will always turn on the first floor heating pump, ground floor heating pump, depending on which one's calling. But what they'll also do is latch across to the boilers one and two central heating demand. But that will only call if we've either got a call from buffer cylinder stat um, or we've got a call um, Sorry, that's not a call. So if we've got a call from the buffer stat, and also that's also going to put a signal across to our loading pump, which is this one. Um, so not quite straightforward, just go through that. So if this stat, so if this uh, zone valve is made, stats calling zone valves made, it's going to send a signal to our loading pump. It's also going to provide a supply into those two relays which if they're activated will fire up our boilers and call those on. So, um, hot water side. So if we get a call for hot water, so we have to be on here, we have to get a call here, um, then that will energize this zone valve, latch that relay, latch these three relays, which links the loading pump to a permanent live and also then uh, gives us a supply latching onto those two boilers, as I said earlier. So that's a complete schematic. I think I've gone over everything there. Anyway, it took me a while to draw that out, as you can imagine, uh, lots and lots of paper, and um, actually went to the job with my original design and realized there were several mistakes on it as I started to do it. But um, overall, got a happy customer, got a little bit more work to do, got to go back and replace one manifold. And um, yeah, okay, well, I hope that helps. Uh, certainly an interesting job for me. I hope it's interesting for